Alrighty. Um, yeah, so just want to say thank you, first of all, Pastor Newton, just to, to give me this chance to come up here and speak to you guys. Um, for, for blessing me and uh, standing behind me and, and um, you know, he's, since I came back from, from uh, overseas and uh, came back a little bit of a broken man, but Pastor Newton has stood with me through this last two, three years, you know, and he has uh, patiently, you know, built into me. He's allowed me to step up um, and um, also the countless hours of prayer that you don't see. You know, I don't see them. But he's a he's an honouring man. He's a great yeah. pastor. So yeah, thank you, thank you, Pastor Lillian. Thank you. So, alrighty. So um, this is something uh, close to me, and um, something that the God's really been building up in me over the last couple of years. So I want to share it with you, um, and it's called understanding your heart, and um, it is really important. And this is a really sort of big topic. It's, um, it's, uh, so I'll give you a bit of, actually, I'll give you a bit of um, warning in advance. So this is a big topic. I've tried to sort of cut it down into something that you can understand, because I really want to get some things out of this that you can get from this. So it's like a big old hunk of Kobe steak, and it's too big to eat in this sort of, uh, this session, but, you know, I can carve a couple of bits out and... And, and throw them out to you guys, all right? So apologise to the vegetarians for the for that. But um, so, but it's a really big topic. But I guarantee you there's some things I want to I want you to get out of this, and that is namely understanding your heart. If you can understand your heart, and actually what God thinks of your heart, and and then also number two, how you can sow into your heart, and how you can build your heart up, heal your heart release your heart and do that. So this is a massive topic and I can't put it all into this one message, but it will alter you and it will change you if you take these things and then go and meditate them and chew on them, okay? So, so um, you know, this is a, there's a lot of scripture in here. There's a lot of scripture in here for a reason uh, and, and you'll see that, you'll see that at the end. So, um, oh, gone there with the G on the end, but yeah, understanding our hearts, okay? So... <laughs> That's there, uh, shrunk up badly here yeah, on the screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all righty, so we go to the next slide. Um, so you guys can read this. So first of all, before we start, we've got to define what's our heart, okay? What, what is the definition of our heart? If we don't, can't start there, then we've got to start there so we can understand what I'm talking about for the rest of the day. So... So, all right, so the Western meaning, you know, the Western meaning is generally just emotions and love, isn't it? Yeah, so that, yeah. that's our general understanding of when we talk about our heart. We know we're not talking about our physical beating heart, yeah. but, um, you know, we're generally talking in a Western sense, um, you know, our emotions, sorry, uh, our emotions and our love, okay? So if you do the next slide, Jakes. Come on, buddy, concentrate. <laughs> Fam family, mate, you let me down. <laughs> Come on. She's there laughing with Nick at the back. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, that's the Western meaning. The Hebrew meaning, which is um, lebab, which I probably pronounced badly, but 250 times that occurs in the Old Testament. And that means the innermost core of yourself, your spiritual life, mental and physical life. Wow. It's really talking about the core of who you are. And you've got the Greek meaning, which is cardia, and we all know that, cardiac arrest. You know, cardia, that's 160 times in the New Testament. Mm. That means your soul and your mind, the center or the seat of the physical and spiritual life, your wow. thoughts and your feelings. So really, when we talk about heart, what we're saying is, you know, it's the very core and inner part of who you are. Yeah. So, that, so that is who has God's made you to be, okay? Yeah. It's the very center of who you are. Not the physical beating heart, but it's just as critical. You know, our heart needs to be, it pumps life around yeah. Yeah. our body, yeah? So our heart is just as important, okay? So that's what that is, that very centre. And, you know, this has been a real revelation for me. I sort of, and I've said it to the guys before a number of times, but, you know, this study of the heart, body, mind and, and spirit, body, soul and spirit, sorry, and the study of the heart has really brought the whole word and the Bible together. Instead of having all these little bits everywhere, it's now knitted those things together, yeah? And it will knit those things together for you guys. Yeah. Instead of just, you know, before, in years, I just felt like I was sort of, 
how do you put it, reaching around in the dark. You know, I'd, yeah. I'd grab a bit here and I'd grab a bit yeah. here and I would have no understanding how it all worked, yeah? Yeah, yeah? I wouldn't understand that. So this will bring it all together. Yeah. And, and this is not something that you can just grab now and, and walk away with and it's all done and dusted. Yeah. I just encourage you, it takes time. Like that big steak, you've got to chew on it, you've got to munch on it, yeah. you know, and you've got to digest it. And it takes time. Okay, but if you do that, if you put that effort in, it will change you right. and it will equip you. It's, it's bigger than that. Okay, so just in the summary, um, down the bottom there, the heart is the core um, of a person's body, mind, emotions, personality, character and spirit. Okay, there is a small S and there is also a big S and I'll explain that a little bit later and that's to do with your salvation. Okay, but I'll explain that later. Um, so said before why the heart there's there's 900 verses on the heart okay god is absolutely a hundred percent after our hearts it is the most important thing in god's mind 900 verses i say that again it mentions the heart if that's not important to god he wouldn't put it in 900 times there is a wealth of it on the heart and he continually talks about it so he's concerned about our heart and our heart condition directly affects our lives it directly affects our lives. So our heart condition is important. And I, what I want to do today is take through the process of salvation, you know, before you were saved, after you're saved, what happens to your heart, and then also then when you take that, how to heal, restore, repair your heart so it overflows with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So that's, that's the idea today. That's what I, I want to do with you guys, okay? So, um, all right. So... God tells us that he searches our heart to see what he can find, okay? So to see what he can find, and we've got some scriptures here. So we go to the next page. So we've got Jeremiah 17, 10. I, Jehovah, search the heart. I try the reins, give, even to give to each man according to his ways, according to the fruits of his doings, okay? I, Jehovah, search the heart, okay? You've got Psalm 44, 21. Shall not God search this out, for he knows the secrets of the heart. Um, and then 1 Chronicles 28, 9. And you, Solomon, my son, know that God, the God of your father, sorry, know the God of your father and serve him with a perfect heart and a willing mind. For Jehovah searches all the hearts and understands all the imaginations of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. If you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. You know, so he searches the heart and he knows the hidden secrets of the heart. Okay, so I encourage you, you've got to delve into your heart. You've got to spend time tending to your heart. So God thinks it's important enough that he's going to delve into your hearts. He knows everybody's secrets here, good and bad, problems and not problems, healed areas and unhealed areas, Problems with, we're going to it later, with weeds and bad seeds. And he also knows the fruits and the good things sown into your heart, yeah. okay? Yeah. So if God seeks after your heart, then why would he not tell you about it? Wow. Yeah. Okay, so if there are things that you're feeling, I'm just going in the same old loop. Mm -hmm. yeah. Round in a circle. Yeah. I try my hardest and I go round and then I come back to the same place. Yeah. And usually these loops tend to get bigger. Okay, they get bigger and bigger and bigger until, boom, it comes pouring down in a big old pile and a big old heap. So if you're finding that, I guarantee you that's a heart issue. It is a heart issue. So you need to search that. You need to ask God to reveal what those things are. So that's something, a really important point I want to get out today. You know, God searches your heart. He knows your heart thoroughly. Okay, so he wants to tell you so you can fix it. And then he wants to equip you so you can fix it. Okay, he doesn't want you in that same place, going around on a merry-go-round ride and never getting off it. Okay? So, you know, God knows our heart, and if we ask him, he will show us. All right. So, okay, what's the problem? Okay, so I want to talk about the problem. The sin problem is due to our heart problem. Okay, so I don't know everyone's condition here, but I presume the majority of you guys are saved. Okay, so we're all taught about the sin problem. Okay, we're all taught that we're sinners and we need Jesus Christ. You know, we need to be righteous and we have to have someone pay for our sins. They can't just be left unjudged. So that's what Jesus came to do. 
He came to take on that weight of sin upon himself that we thankfully, and I thank Jesus, that I'm not held accountable for my sin anymore because Jesus Christ took that on the cross. So we've got righteousness, you know, and that is incredible. If that was all we had in our salvation, in the good news, the gospel, then that would be amazing and that would be more than we deserve. But you know what? It's more than that. It's more than that. You know, the gospel of good news is that, you know, that's translated almost too good to be true news. You know, it's almost too good to be true. And he came, actually he came, how do you put it? Put it in a way. So sin was the problem, right? And it's here. And it's created that barrier between us and God. We're here, we're there. There's this big sin wall. You know, you've heard those things before. But what was he trying to knock that wall down for? He was trying to knock that wall down to get to our hearts. Because our hearts were hardened and not alive to God. He wanted to come in and revive our hearts, okay? That's the point of it. Because if he knows he can get into our heart, which is actually the, the source of who we are, he can affect change in our lives. So we had to knock down that sin barrier. That's crucial. I'm not lessening that. But what I'm saying is his objective, his, his whole aim was to get into our hearts. To get into our hearts. That's the point of this gospel. That's the point of salvation. You know, I came from Baptist and they preach the sin part. They do that very well. But I'd never heard, never heard that about the heart. Never, never occurred to me. Never occurred to me, okay? So, you know, that's, the sin problem is a heart problem. Okay, so when you're unsaved, you know, there's a, there's a, a root cause. And I just want to just give some scriptures here to spell it out. So it's important. I'm going to put scriptures in all of this because I'm not going to just use one. I'm going to use two, three, four, five. Because the points I make are not based on one scripture. They're based on consistent Amen. number of scriptures yeah. to prove the point again and again and again and again. Yeah. Because I want you to know that this is the word of God. Yeah. It's important. And, and it's not some doctrine based on one. It's yeah. based on many. And yes. it's consistent message yeah. throughout the Bible. Yeah. Okay, so God tells us the non-regenerated heart is naturally wicked. Now, this, this was a good revelation for me because, you know, when I was saved and then you'd read verses like, you know, the heart is desperately wicked, who can know it? And above all else, and I'm all confused because you're thinking, because I haven't got, you know, actually, you all know this, the plumb line, yeah? You know, the plumb line that tells you, we've all been ta talking about that. So the plumb line, the plumb line is the point of your salvation. So when he says the heart is desperately wicked and who can know it, okay, there's a point of, and we're on one side or that. That's pre-salvation. That is pre-being saved, okay? But when you are saved, something happens to your heart. And we'll go into that to a minute. But I've just given you an example of how when you understand the heart, it brings clarity to the word of God. It brings point. You've got plumb line. You've got where it is, okay? So we read these things. Uh, a description, sorry, Genesis 6, 5. And God saw the wickedness on, of man was great on earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Yeah. The thoughts of your heart. It doesn't say the thoughts of your mind, which is what we generally yeah. think we think with, is yeah. our heads. It says the imaginations of the thoughts of his heart. Yeah. You know, Genesis 8, 21. And Jehovah said in his heart, he even speaks into his own heart. I will never again curse the ground for man's sake because the imaginations of his heart were evil from his youth. Yeah. And wow, that is, you know, you build that in, that scripture. He says, you know, with Noah and the flood, the world was so, so rotten. Man's heart was actually so rotten that every thought, it says, every thought was continually even, wow. evil. And it were beyond redemption. There was only Noah and his eight mm. and his family of eight that were saved. The rest of the world was wiped out. And aren't we thankful now? He says, never again will I flood the earth. He knows our heart condition. He knows our heart condition. He goes, no, there's a better way. There's a better way to restore the heart. You know, and he's showing us this. He's showing us this throughout human history from, from Adam and Eve, where Adam decided, you would learn these things when we're talking about to give his heart to Eve rather than God first. That's where the problem all started. He gave his, he had a hard choice to make. Do I obey God and follow God or do I go with Eve? Adam made that mistake of going with Eve and it's been a heart condition problem ever since. Yeah. You know, yes, it's a sin problem, but it's a heart condition problem. Okay. 
So, um, you know, and this is what I was reading before, Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's that plumb line. Right. Yeah. Where are you understanding? That's talking about the unsaved, unchanged heart. Yeah. Okay. And then Matthew 15, 80 to 18 to 20. But the things will come out of the map. Sorry. But the things which come out of the mouth come from the heart. Yeah. Things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. And they defile a man. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. Yeah. Okay? So you're talking about that heart problem. You know, we talk about... I, I've heard it and I asked the question myself before I was unsaved. What about this guy? He's a good guy. Why has he got to go to hell? You know, he, you see those questions. Yeah. But he's saying it's a heart condition. Yeah. It's what's coming out of his heart. Yeah. God seeks our hearts, not our actions. He looks at our hearts. Yeah. yeah, we can do something on the outside that might not appear that good, but if it's done with an in heart of an intent to do good, that's how God judges it. And vice versa. People can do lots of wonderful things that look nice on the outside, but your heart's not right. You're doing it for some ulterior motive. You're doing it for something else. He judges your hearts, okay? So... Um, and then we've got Psalm 10, 13. Why do the wicked condemn God? He has said in his heart, you will not judge. Yeah. I'll say that again. Why do the wicked condemn God? Why does the unbeliever condemn God? For he has said in his heart, you shall not judge me. How many times do you hear that in this day and age? Don't judge me. Yeah. You don't know me. You can't judge me. Don't come with your religion. Come don't come with that. Because they've said in their heart, they've got this heart problem. Don't judge me, God. Yeah. You don't have a right to judge me. But he's a righteous God and he has to judge. Yeah. He has to judge, otherwise he's not righteous. Yeah. And he is righteous and he will judge. Yeah. So that's a dangerous place to be in. And a, a bit of a side note, you know, that's why he brought the law. If you think about it, up until the time of Moses, there was no law. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then the law came. Why? You know, Romans uh, 3, 19 to 20 says, but we know that whatever... Um, things the law says it says to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may be under judgment before God yeah. because by the works of the law no flesh will be justified in his sight for through the law is the knowledge of sin yeah. so every mouth in the world will be stopped when we stand before God you not you can make all the excuses you want but he's going to judge you before the law you're going to know that you know, and I'm grateful for Jesus. I was I led, led a wild life before I came to Jesus. Yeah. You know, if I stood before Jesus, I have not a shadow of doubt. If I stand before him unsaved, I have no shadow of a doubt that I would be condemned and I would deserve judgment. Yeah. And I would have to say, yeah, Lord, it is right. And I have nothing to stand on. But I got Jesus Christ to stand on that. Okay. Jesus stands on that. He's washed that away. Okay. All right, so we look at David's plea. Um, David's plea, you know, he understood. David, David's an amazing man, but, you know, this was before the Holy Spirit came. You know, the Holy Spirit sat on this guy, and he was an amazing man. That's why I think why God said he's, he's, got, he's a heart, he's a man who's after my own heart. Right. Yeah? yeah? He said that for, for a reason. That's a wonderful thing. He understood the problem, and he says it here. He says, Lord, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. He knew that problem. He knew the problem. He knew his heart condition and he knew what he needed was the Holy Spirit. And we're going to that in, in a little bit. So the, 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 the sin problem, I'll say again, is due to the heart problem. The sin problem is due to the heart problem. So what does sin do? Because of sin, we've got a stony, cold heart. It hardens our heart, okay? Sin hardens our heart. So in the unsaved condition, that plumb line, looking at that side of stuff, you've got a hard heart towards God. That means that you've got a heart that is incapable of communing with him, incapable of understanding the Word of God. I knew when I was unsaved, I thought the Word of God was nonsense. I thought it was a with just a load of stupid old stories that were put together and a load of rubbish, you, you know, and I didn't understand it. It was hidden to me. Mm. And I thought it was rubbish. But when I took that step, and it was a long step for me, you know, a bit stubborn, 
I sat in church for three years, believe it or not. <laughs> three years listening to the Word of God, but the Word of God does sink in. I was sat in the back, you know, this is nudging me, you know, as I'm looking around. <gasps> Bored, you know, what's this silly idiot at the front talking about? You know, but it does sink in. It does begin to ask you questions. And when he says, you know, uh, uh, here, here, here um, if you, uh, sorry, what am I trying to say? So if you, if you um, he will draw you, sorry, to him. That's what I'm trying to say. He will draw you to him. And he started to draw me to him. I started to ask questions. I started to look into it, okay? So, you know, that was a journey. But that's the problem is before I had a hardened heart to God, I was incapable of understanding his word. It was just rubbish to him. I was incapable of talking to him. I was incapable of understanding to him from hearing his voice. Incapable. Because we've got a heart condition problem. That's what Jesus came to fix. Okay, so um, God made that promise to fix the heart problem, and he prophesies this in the Old Testament. And this is prophesied actually three different scriptures, but I've just picked Ezekiel 36. It's, the, it's my favorite way of wording it. Um, it's 36, 26. I will give you a new heart. I will put in you a new spirit within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, um, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Okay, I will give you a new heart and I'll put a new spirit with inside you. That is what happens at salvation. I will take the stony heart out and I'll give you a heart of flesh. That's a picture of a heart pumping. That's a picture of a heart beating. Yeah, that's in a, in a spiritual heart there. You know, blood pumps around our body to keep us alive. This is our spirit alive to God again. It's pumping, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So that is an amazing prophecy. And that prophecy was fulfilled when Jesus died and rose again. And in 2 Corinthians 3.3, 3, he, he's reiterating this is the promise that we made back in Ezekiel. Mm. This is now here. It said, having been made plain. Oh, shall we go to the next one, sorry. Yeah, so 2 Corinthians 3.3. 3, having been made plain that you are an epistle, an epistle is a written letter of Christ ministered by us not having been written with ink yeah. but with the spirit of the living God yeah. not on tablets of stone yeah. Yeah. yeah but on fleshly tablets of the heart yeah. so that's the fulfillment of the prophecy he's removed the sin problem now yeah. and now as that I lo love that picture yeah. you know there's a now a beating heart underneath that there's a heart that's alive to God so that's what God has done, okay? And he's done it for a reason. So he's made that stone cold heart and he's revived it to God. Okay, so that's, that's what's happened, the good news, okay? That is too good to be true news. You know, he's not just removed the, sun, uh, the, the sin problem, he's now dealt with the heart problem. Okay, so that's, that understanding is key. And I hope you take that away. That's what's happened at salvation. That is... That is and there's more to it, but that is a key thing that's happened at salvation, yeah? So I want to take, take that from it. Okay, and um, should we go to the next slide, um, please? Um, you know, a new start with a new heart, you know, that's capable of communing with God, yes. capable of understanding the Word of God, and capable to hear God speak. Yes. Now, I use this word in particular, capable. Yes. You have the equipment to do so. Yes. You, you have the tools to do so, but it doesn't necess necessarily mean that you will. Okay? You've got to learn how it works. You've got to learn how the heart works and how you restore that, capable of communing with God, capable of understanding the Word of God, capable of hearing Him speak. Okay, that's what He's done. So that's restored hearts done for you. You don't have to try for that. Understand that. Don't say, oh, God, help me to understand your voice, to hear your voice. I can't hear your voice, God. No, he's given you that tool. Yes. Your heart is now beating. You just have to learn how to do it. Yes. So pray, teach me how to hear your yes. voice. Yes. Don't ask for it, because he's already done that. Yes. He's already equipped it. Yes. Teach me how to hear your voice. Yes. Okay, so how did a new heart happen? Okay, we go to the next slide, please. Um, the new heart is called a circumcised heart. Yeah. Okay? So we all know the physical all makes us men cross our legs and, and uh, 
you know, but the physical <laughs> circumcision of all Hebrew males that occurred on the eighth day. So we all, um, so you know, that occurred on the eighth day. So, um, so why the eighth day? What was the eighth day? The eighth day was Sunday. That was the day of Pentecost, yeah, yeah. and that's an interesting point there. Mm-hmm. The eighth day they often referred to, after the seventh day, the next day, you could call it day one, but Sunday, the day of Pentecost. Why was that? You know, why was it the day of Pentecost? That's when the, obviously, when the disciples came to the upper room and they received the power of the Holy Spirit. So the circumcision of the heart, cutting around, that's what circumcision means, is that God performed heart surgery on our inner man. And he combined his Holy Spirit with our heart. Don't ask me how that works. I've got no idea. I <laughs> have no idea how that works, but he did it. Yeah. He, he changed your spirit. Remember I said back at the beginning, little spirit and big spirit? Yeah. Suddenly now you've got big spirit living here. Yeah. It's not the spirit of man. It's not your sad, broken little spirit. You've got the spirit of God that is combined with your very heart, the core of who you are, has bound in and that is in your heart. Yeah. So that is really critical. Yeah. So, um, you know, that was, and it was prophetically done in Deuteronomy, you know, 10, 16 and, and 36. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no longer what? Stiff-necked. You know, you used to call the Jews stiff-necked, stubborn, you know, unwielding. How many times, you know, 40 years in the desert, how many times is that re- repeated? You know, I was yeah. stubborn, I was unwielding. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart, the heart of thy seed, to love, why? To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, that thou may live. That you will live. It will bring life. That's it. And that, again, the prophecy was fulfilled. I want to see the Old Testament and New Testament fulfilled again. Colossians 2.11. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of sins of the flesh yes. by the circumcision of Christ. Yes. Okay, so there's a circumcision being there. There's heart surgery done there. That Holy Spirit is now bound with you. If you're saved, you've got that. Yes. You have that now. That has happened. You've had heart surgery. Yes. So you've got all the equipment, all the tools you need. Okay? Now you just have to understand now how to deal with your heart. Okay? So... Um, yeah, so I'll, just, I'll mention a few scriptures here just to prove the point because it is a key point that the, yes. that the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in our heart or our inner man. If you hear the Bible talk about our inner man, yes. it's talking about your heart, right. okay, your inner man, okay? So um, we've got, uh, if we go to the next slide, please. So we've got 1 Corinthians 3.16. Um, Do you not know that you are a temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? Okay, John 14, 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. No, no, what I said, cannot receive it. Cannot receive the spirit of God unless you're saved and your heart's restored. You can't receive that spirit because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him. You, a saved believer, know him and he dwells with you and he shall be in you. That's what it means. It's that heart and spirit combined. Okay, that's what that's talking about. He has sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. So he's sealed us. He's marked us as his. When he looks in, when we come to him, he looks into our heart. He does a heart inspection. What's in there? You know, ah, it's got my seal. You know, and you don't want to turn up before God without a seal of the Holy Spirit. You do not, because then he's got to judge what's in your heart. And what's out of your heart? We said that earlier, didn't we? Everything spews out of your heart's not good. You don't want that judged. You want to be stamped with a brand new heart of God. Okay. And earnest, actually, that's what I looked up, means down payment or security. So God, earnest means down payment or security. So he's put down that to mark you, to go, okay, I've paid what you need to do, and you can come and redeem that now. You've got the security. You've bought that through. All right. So I think... Uh, Charles Spurgeon puts it really well, and I'll just put this up because um, I read this, these old fire and brimstone preachers, but they put it well. <laughs> so, um, the Holy Spirit cannot dwell in the old heart. It is a filthy place 
devoid of all, sorry, devoid of all good and yeah. full of enmity to God. His very first operation upon our nature is to pull down the old house and build himself a new one, that he may be able to inhabit us consistently with the Holy Spirit. There you go. So it's a filthy old place full of enmity towards God. You don't have that anymore. So if you're sort of struggling with sin, if you're struggling with these heart issues and conditions, it's not a problem with your heart. Oh, sorry, I should say God has given you everything you need to overcome that. Okay, so we're going to it next. So um, I just want to make an important point here. Um, our heart condition determines how we live yeah. our lives. Okay, so our heart condition is really important. Proverbs 4.23, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Yeah. Okay, so you can see the importance of our heart. Out of it are the issues of life. Diligently keep your heart. We're going to that shortly. And then Matthew 12, either, either make the trees good and its fruit good, or else make the trees corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit, offspring of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak of good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings out good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings out evil things he is talking to the saved stroke unsaved person out of your heart he's speaking to the pharisees there you breed of evil vipers hardened hearts hardened heart unsaved hearts and then what proverbs 23 7 for as he thinketh in his heart so is he as you think in your not in here as you think in here we won't go there <laughs> a bit of a side joke but men often thinking goes from here and misses here if you know what I mean <laughs> so, 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 with men bit of a side joke between us men but yeah so you know as you think in your heart so are you and that thinketh and I got this from Pastor Lorraine actually which is brilliant and he came up because your message on gates but thinketh actually means to part or to open or to act as a gatekeeper so your message on gatekeeper that, that clicked when I, when I saw that, and I actually stole some of your sermon when I spoke to, uh, to uh, uh, Pastor Paul's men's group the other week. So I, it was too good, I couldn't change it. It was perfect, so I just slotted, slotted it in there. So thank you, Pastor Lorraine, that was good. So, um, yeah, so basically, don't think you're going to see change in your life on the outside if you are not going to change your heart on the inside. You can... You know, and I've done it as a young Christian for years. I'm going to change this. <laughs> I'm tired of being like this, God, so I am going to... No more anger. No more anger. And that's as strong as your willpower is. Yeah. Yeah. That's an hour, a week, a, da- a, you know, a month, yeah. Yeah. a year. Yeah. Don't care what it is, but it falls eventually. Because yeah. you yeah. say yeah. all the time, I'm going to. Yeah. Okay? I'm going to do that. But you haven't realised you've got a heart problem. It's not what you're doing on the outside. Oh. It's in here. Okay, so, so how do you match the two in now? Because you've said, okay, Alice, you're telling me I've got this brand new, brilliant heart. So why have I got these problems, yeah? It's not, it's not that your heart is perfected. Okay, I want you to think of it. We're going to the parable of the sower, and this is a real revelation for me. But he's made you a brand new heart that's capable of communing with him. Remember that? Capable of communing with him. Yeah. Capable of hearing his voice. Capable of understanding the word of God. But it's a brand new field, okay? It's like a big open field, and it's going to have things sown in it. And you've got to check the condition of the soil as well. All right? So you don't come with this perfect heart. There's wounds in hearts. There's weeds in hearts. Things that have been sown in which are contrary to what God tells about you. You've got to deal with those. You've got to diligently um, look after your heart. So... I want to go finally into the parable of the the sower, okay? And this is an amazing revelation. I I studied this for over a year, and it it just keeps giving, and it keeps giving. I've done it with the men's group, you you know, and and we've taught it, and I can't do it justice in in this this thing. So I encourage you. I've got notes I'm quite willing to send you guys post up, but I encourage you guys to study the parable of the sower because this is the key. This is the key to how you restore and you heal your heart. And it's actually really simple. 
but it takes revelation. Without revelation, you won't see change. Yeah. It's just words, your, words I'm speaking out now, you're not going to get it. You might get excited. You might go, oh, I like what he's saying. But if you don't take that and chew on that big steak and meditate on that, you won't see change. I guarantee you. So it starts here. It doesn't end here. Yeah. So that revelation comes. All right. So, um, so I just want to say, uh, take care of what you sow in your heart. Okay. So the first parable, it's really important for three reasons. This is what struck out out to me you know when the jesus said i look for these things in the bible he says verily verily he said you know hey stop and look no 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 stop and look he's saying that twice stop and listen so i should say stop and listen i'm about to tell you something really important so firstly it's repeated three times in the gospel so that parable of says repeated in matthew mark and luke okay three times it's repeated secondly he thought this was so important that he was going to explain the parable. So Jesus gives parables, but he doesn't explain every one. But he thinks it's so important, he actually says, now I'm going to explain this to you. Okay, and then thirdly, and in some ways I think most importantly, he made this statement. And he said unto them, if you don't know this parable, how then will you know all other parables? Okay, so he's saying, if you can't understand this, don't go to the other parables. Because if you don't understand this, you're not going to get there. Yeah? So if you can't understand this, you're not going to be able to understand all other parables. So this parable is a master key. This set me off. This parable here has set me off talking about the heart now, what I'm talking to you guys here. Because that was sewn into me and, uh, you know, and getting to understood that. And it's not natural. I'll tell you that now. It is not natural. It takes time. It takes time to get in there. But when it does, it will transform you. Three years ago, I'll remind you, I came back a broken man. The devil had put a blender in my brain and just gone and whizzed the thing up, yeah? Broken man, lost family, you know, lost marriage, sorry, and and everything I owned I'd lost, yeah? Mind all over the place, okay? But it was what was sown in there, and, and I'll just go off on a slight tangent now, but, you know, I went over to serve God in a foreign country, and I, with the great of his intentions my intentions were good but i came ill-equipped and i had a lot of knowledge sewn up here and it wasn't sewn here okay so when the devil attacked me i fell apart it was like he scrambled my brain and it all all these scriptures that i knew flew away and i went back to my inside myself to my base base things to how you react you, you know, and, and I just shut down. I was just like, I can't even, like, I can't describe the cloud I was under, okay, the heavy cloud I was under, you know, and, I, and that's why I honour Pastor Newton. He helped me come from out of that cloud. You know, he stood with me. You know, we need other men, we need other women to stand with us. It's important. I want to stand with the men in, in this church. I want to stand with them and help them to not go through what I went through, or if you've gone through it, help restore you. Three years. It's not long. I'm stood up here. I couldn't have done this three years ago. I had nothing three years ago. Nothing. I couldn't do this. He could change it around, and he can change it quickly. Kido is the parable of the sower in your heart. Okay, so I'm going to go over it really briefly, because maybe we need to stop and slap ourselves, because I am going on a bit. Keep going. Not, don't slap the person next to you or anything, especially if it's Auntie Roseanne or... <laughs> well, Pastor Newton might need to raise someone from the dead if that happens, I reckon. So. <laughs> but Parley knows what I'm talking about, don't you, Parley? <laughs> so, um, okay, so the parable of the sower. Um, where are we? Yeah, go to the next one. Okay, so the parable describes the word as, as the seed. I'm not going to go in through all the scriptures, um, but I'm just beginning the key points. You need to go and meditate on this yourselves. But the parable describes the word as a seed, okay? And that seed must be sown in your heart. Now, think about a seed. Seed's got a stored amount of energy, yeah? So the natural seed I'm talking about, you, you can put it in a black cupboard, in a dark cupboard with no soil, put a bit of water on it, and it will sprout. But if you leave it in there too long, what happens? 
it's got a certain amount of stored energy. That's the power of the word of God, okay? But if you just take that little bite, if you come out of here with the word of God, you get all excited and you go, that's it. But then you put it in a dark cupboard and leave it. It sprouts and it grows, but it dies off because it doesn't have the things it needs to go on to produce fruit, okay? So that's the, remember, the word has power, but once that power, once that spark of life has come, you need to do something else with it, okay? You need to do something else. That's what we're going to go into next. So you must understand the seed, okay? Otherwise, the devil will steal that away. So what that means is you need to understand the word. And it says understand with your heart, not with your mind. Remember what I said? I had a lot of intellectual understanding when I went away. Yeah? And that flew away, useless, because I didn't understand it with my heart. It wasn't sewn in there. Okay? So that wasn't sewn in there. You know, like a, like a plant, when it's a young, sown in your heart, when it's, or you look at a negative, a weed, we all know what that's like in Australia. So lawns are dead set useless, aren't they? So, um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, there's a little weed in there. You can pluck that thing out with two fingers. You know, leave it in there for a couple of months and you can yank on that thing yeah. <laughs> with all hands, yeah. can't you? And it will not come out. Wow. It's hard. You know, it'll often snap. The worst thing is, snap, you leave the roots and then you know it's coming back, don't you? You're like, <laughs> so, That's what it's like. So, um, so remember, um, understanding. That sparks. That's the Holy Spirit. That's like watering the seed, okay, in the cupboard. That's putting the water in there. We need the Holy Spirit for that. Unsaved condition can't understand it. Now you're saved. You have the Holy Spirit in your heart. You can understand the Word of God. I'll give you some tips in a bit how you do that. Okay, so check your heart condition. Remember, God searches our hearts. He knows our heart condition. We can ask him to reveal it to us. Yes. All righty. So I just want to go briefly into the four heart conditions because it talks about four soul types, okay? Get my fingers right. I think I'll be able to count, wouldn't you? Um, so the wayside heart. This is the only heart condition that sees no growth at all. Wow. Okay. So all the four soil types you saw growth. This is the only one that doesn't. Why? Because there was no understanding. Yeah. No sparks of the Holy Spirit. So this thing, thanks, Nick, you're keeping up with me. Good. Uh, so, you know, no growth at all. So that means that can be applied to the unsaved person or it can be applied to us as a, as a saved person who just don't understand what it is. Yeah. Okay? And that's why the baptism, and I'll go on to it in a minute, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit is key. Yeah. Honestly, when, it, when I got saved... And my heart was restored and the Holy Spirit lived in me, but I was not baptized in the, in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay? So I came from Baptist, you know? <laughs> Fundamentalist Baptist. <laughs> 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 you know? Turn up diligently, dress the right way every week, and eventually, if you're a good boy, you might get to collect the offerings. <laughs> No, I'm not, don't let me knock them too much because I got saved there. And they did teach me about sin. They did teach me about how destructive it is. But, you know, you know they, they didn't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. They didn't understand it and they didn't believe in the baptism of it. And when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you now, boom, the word opened to me. The word opened to me. But you need keys as well. It's not just about understanding. This is a key. The parable of the sower is a key. And it will open up the Bible for you. You'll see it. I see it every time I read the Bible. I can't help. It just comes in. Wow, that's linked. Wow, that's linked. Now I understand what he's saying there. Before I didn't get the context. It's like understanding that context. So check your heart condition. Um, sorry, so no, we're on the next bit, aren't we? So that's the wayside heart. So no understanding. So that's a problem. The rocky heart or the hardened heart. Okay. So it talks about the ground. This is the parable where it says, if you don't know it, you know, the seed was planted in rocky ground. It, it sprouted up quickly. Ooh. Sprouted up quickly, but then the sun came. And because it didn't have deep roots, yes. it shrunk away and shriveled and died. And, that, and Jesus translated that as saying, you know, this is the believer who receives the word with joy. How happy are we? We've got the word. Yeah, that excites me. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go and conquer the world now. So I've got this scripture. You know, and Pentecostals could do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Grab a scripture. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to start blabbing. Boom, 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 and the whole world's going to change. And then suddenly, what happens? They're shocked because it says why. It says, 
because they've spoken a word. Persecution will come for the word's sake. Okay, so persecution comes because the word's been spoken. The devil hates that because he knows the power and he's going to go, okay, Mr. Pentecostal, he's blabbed that word. I'm going to test you with that word. I'm going to come and I'm going to test you. Will you stand up? Do you have deep roots? And what does he do? What's the cause of something which doesn't have deep roots? Those deep roots have got blockages, hard places in our heart. It can't break through. What are those hard places? They're wounds. You know, and the devil will expose that wound. When you go out, this is, I learned this when I went overseas, the hard way. I don't want you guys to go through that okay he will get those wounds and he'll jam his finger right in there and pick it and open up that wound again and that wound will consume you that will take your focus off that and it'll go there hard places are are um actually just like i mentioned i didn't you know um saved in a baptist church it was a big struggle for me to come to the acceptance of the baptism of the holy spirit hardened place the word couldn't really get in there i had no real understanding the depths you know we said before it's like an onion you're peeling off layers i just had the skin off i didn't i didn't have the layers the depths yeah so yeah had a lot of tears i like that yeah (laughs) and he got the skin off there was a lot of tears yeah very good (laughs) very good so um you know so that's the, you know, you won't accept the true word of God. Yeah. You've got bad doctrine, you've got bad teaching, you've got wounds in your heart. Yeah. So you need to deal with those wounds. Can I, can I tell you, like one of the biggest wounds is unforgiveness. Yeah. And it is poison to the heart. Yeah. It will harden your heart. Yeah. Okay. So I had something I had to forgive when everything fell apart and it was big. You don't need to know what it is, but it was big and... And there's one thing I'm thankful for. So all I talked about that doctrine that flew away. One thing that I did have sown in my heart was salvation, my need as a sinner for Jesus and my need to be forgiven of sin. That was sown in my heart. So that didn't fly away. So when this crunch time came, when it goes, okay, what are you going to do, Alistair? You're going to hold on to that in bitterness. Are you going to hold on to that and stew on it and meditate, and let you poison yeah. your body yeah. and your mind and your soul and your spirit? Or are you going to do what God calls us to do? And God's good. He gently reminded me. You know, he, said, he said, Alistair, I have forgiven you of so much. How can yeah. you not forgive others? Wow. And every time that thought came to me, yeah. how can I not forgive? I've been forgiven of worse actually than what happened yeah. to me yeah. so yeah. so you know i've broken every commandment okay and i mean every commandment so if i've done that and i can be forgiven of that how can i not forgive others yeah. how can i not jesus died for me how can i not extend that same grace yeah. so that's an example of something sown in my heart that didn't fly away why could i stand on that 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 saved me from the current situation i tell you that saved me from that. I wouldn't be able to stand here without that. So he will use what's sown in your heart. Okay. And then we'll talk about um, a heart full of weeds. Now, this is one that applies, I would say, to the majority of Christians. And I'm not trying to point fingers, but we've got to be careful what we sow in our hearts. And we sow weeds in our hearts. We sow bad thoughts, things that are not in line with God, into our hearts. You know, what if... What's the weed been? My dad told me I never amount to anything. Yeah. My dad said I'm useless. Yeah. You know, um, and you take that and what do you say? Oh, yeah, I'm never going to do it. I'm useless. Yeah. I can't do that. I'm no good. I'm not going to amount to anything. Yeah. You know, they're weeds that you're sowing, right? And they enter in through here, the mine, that's the gatekeeper, right. and they get sown into your heart. Now, when it's just a thought, or you've said it once or twice, it's like that little weed and you can come down and just pluck that out. Yeah. Not too hard to deal with. Yeah. But when you've repeated that for years and there are people here that have had hurt and pain caused to them yeah. and they are repeating that year after year, they've sown that and that thing has grown into a big old weed. But worse than that, worse than that, it's come to seed. Yes. So that's come to seed and then that, those seeds of destruction sow more 
out and out and out. And you suddenly, you know, your heart is full of weeds. Yeah. And these things are hard to then deal with. They don't come out quick. But I want a word of encouragement here because he's given us something that will fix those things. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go into a minute, but there's that weed you can't get up. It comes into seed, you know. I've said about, I said at the men's group, I've got a well, I've got a lawn. I'm a, I'm a you know, I rent a house. So I've got a lawn and it's terrible. It's like half full of weeds. So the best I can do is cut it well short and keep it nicely, <laughs> nicely trimmed with weeds with about 50% grass. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's gone past it. Why? Because it's gone to seed. Yeah. Those things have gone to seed and it's just a dead loss. And you know what? Sadly, that's how a lot of people's hearts that come into wow. church look like. Yeah. We walk in with a nice, nice dress and we're, all we're doing is just trimming them weeds. And that's all we can do to hold it together. We've just got this heart that's just, you know, well-trimmed weeds. And they sprout up. And we try and trim them down. We try and dress nice and come to church nice. But it's not fixing the problem. We're not pulling those weeds out. They need to be removed. And they can only be removed and replaced with the Word of God. Okay? So that's the Word of God. Okay, so we go to the next slide. Oh, sorry, I didn't do the good soil. So the good soil, we've got a heart, right? And it says it, the heart condition needs to be understands an honest, good heart produces fruit, goes on to maturity, the fruits of the spirit. So an honest and a good heart, you might not be there yet, okay? But there's a key of sowing the word in. If you get there, you just go, I'm not going to go with preconceived ideas. I'm going to let the word of God, just the Bible, speak to me. And I'm going to sow that into my heart. I'm going to forget doctrines I've been taught. I'm going to forget things I've been taught and I'm going to let the word of God tell me what it is. Okay? So that's a real key. So this, if we go to the next slide, please, the final one. So um, a spiritual key. Okay? So what have we got there? So, okay, so sow the word of God into your heart. It brings life. Okay? It brings the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So we take the word of God. We sow that into our heart. So you understand it. Remember, number one, you understand the word of God. It sparks life. Yeah. It starts to grow, but it's a little sapling. It can wilt under the pressure. Deal with your heart problems. Deal with the rocky, hard places. Let that have the best condition and soil to grow in. Okay? Pull the weeds out. Get rid of the things that are no good for you. Yes. You, you know what I mean? Stop doing the things that are no good for you. It's hard sometimes, but, you know, if you... If you're only watching ABC News, for instance, sake, you think you're going to die of coronavirus in the next five minutes, wouldn't you? So, so it's the most lethal disease ever known to mankind if you listen to the ABC. But that's not the truth of it, is it? You're not going to die tomorrow of the thing. I'm not getting political here, but I'm just giving an example. If that's all you listen to, that sows weeds in. And there are a lot of young people that are frightened to go back to work and are terrified of this disease. And they don't need to be. If you're young, statistically, you're pretty safe. Yeah. <laughs> so you're almost very safe. But I'm just giving it as an example. Yeah. I'm not getting political about it. It's just they've meditated on this. They're fearful of this thing. Yeah. And they're doing And it's in direct contradiction to God's word. Yeah. So you counter these things with God's word. Yeah. Yeah. Let God's word, truth, light shine on those weeds and shrivel yeah. up those weeds. Yeah. Let the heat go back on the devil's lies, not him heat your weeds up, okay? Yeah. So, you know, you want those fruits of spirit and we all want it. That's the process of sanctification. That's yeah. what your heart does. Mm. Because you want the fruits of the spirit. We all want those. Love, joy, peace, happiness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we long patience. <laughs> you know, long suffering as it's called. Yeah, be careful when you ask for patience. You're asking for suffering, by the way. <laughs> so, so you're asking for trouble. <laughs> so, um, but, um, and I just want to finish on these scriptures. Um, Psalm yeah, Psalm 119, 11. I've hidden your word in my heart so that I might not sin against you. You've got a sin problem. Hide the word of God in your heart. Sow the word of God in your heart and it will change you. Yeah. Proverbs 4:20. My son, listen to my words. Bow down your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Yeah. For they are life to them who find it and health to all flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Okay? Keep your heart with all diligence. Remember I said I'm a, I rent a house and my lawn's stuffed. I'm not going to 
spend a lot of money spraying that thing out, seeding it, top dressing it. I don't own it. <laughs> I don't own it. So I'm going to keep it well trimmed, yeah? But I own my heart. Yeah. So don't treat your heart like something you rent. Piece of advice. Yeah. Treat it like it's your own. With all diligence, inspect your heart, look at your heart. Go out of this place, search it. God knows what's in it, search it and replace it. Fill it full of the Word of God. Okay, fill it full of the Word of God. I want to caution you. We'll go, is there one more slide? Can't remember. Ah, oh, yeah. Matthew 6. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. What do you treasure? Do you treasure the Word of God? Do you treasure that Word of God? Because that's where your heart will be. Do you treasure that Word? And that Word, I guarantee you, three years ago, mess. Now I'm out of that. I'm not all there yet. I'm not all, all 100% there, but I'm come out of it. I can see a path. I can see it away. Oh, wow. God's equipping me with things that I can share with you now that I want my heart is to share with men. Mm. You know, that's what he's put on, to wow. restore the steps, wow. to put in the right place. If you wow. understand yourself, yeah. you will understand when the enemy comes and attacks you. Yeah, yeah. When you think it's all a crazy mess, you'll be able to step back and go, no, hang on a minute, I see what's happening here. Mm. And now I know how to deal with it. Yeah. Okay, that's why I want every, everybody in this church, not just the men, but everybody in this church to be able to do. Yeah, you know, because it's powerful. And I think there is one last slide, is there? Here we go. This is, this is my, my saying, which, which uh, Andrew's in the back there. He's heard me say it 100 times at, at um, home church. But put your effort into the word of God and the word of God will change yeah. you without effort. Yeah. So I'll say that again. Put your effort into the word of God, and the word of God will change you without effort. Wow. Don't walk out of here going, oh, I feel convicted by that pommy. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and change what I'm doing. I'm, oh, I'm giving up smoking, I'm giving up drinking, I'm giving up swearing, whatever it is. You know, do not walk out of here and do that, please. Your effort goes into the Word of God, not into yeah. changing yourself. Yeah. 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 And then that will change you with no effort. You will, you will wake up and you'll go, wow, hang on a minute. I've just dealt with this differently. Why have I just done that? That's the Word of God sown in your heart and it's bearing fruit. And we all want to be a place where patience overflows. You know, Pastor Lorraine, patience yeah. is a fruit that you have in abundance yeah. and it overflows. Yeah. Now, you might not think of it, but you do because it comes out of you and, and it affects people around yeah. you, yeah? yeah? It affects people around you because that is something that God has sown in your heart and you've meditated on and you've bought and it's a fruit and it comes in season after season and there's more of it than you can handle and that affects people around you and that's what we want. That's where we want to get to, disciples of Christ. Yes. So look, so thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Wow. And um, yeah, thank you. Woo!